welcome to day nine of Vlogmas. I thought we'd have a nitty chat today. I feel like just curling up and talking about yarny stuff, a bit more like a normal podcast episode than a standard vlog. Um, and I know it's supposed to be like a video log, and this kind of is, it's a video, this episode is a video log of what I've been making so far during Vlogmas. Um, but yeah, we're not doing a normal vlog style video today. Um, hopefully quite understandably if you haven't seen um my most recent vlog my little boy was taken ill in the night we ended up at a and e my husband and little boy didn't get back till half five this morning and we're all exhausted and the instruction is to rest for all of us really but especially for bobbin so he's upstairs napping my husband is sort of pottering upstairs so if you can hear any bumps it's him tidying up upstairs and doing some sorting out because his mind isn't in the right place to settle to doing his uni assignment either so and I just feel like curling up and chatting about yarny things with some like-minded folk and I hope you're down for that um so yeah if you are really only here sort of recently as vlogmas you might not know that I own the Midnight Diary which is a hand dyed knitting company and pattern house Saying pattern house sounds really grand, but essentially that's what it is. I produce knitting and crochet patterns, albeit not very many so far and on a small scale, but we've got to start somewhere, right? And hand dyed yarns, and I teach knitting and crochet, although I do dabble in other crafts as well. And semi regularly, I bring a video podcast where we talk about creative things and creative process. And Vlogmas, obviously, we're doing this year as well. So, um, I've finished a couple of things during Vlogmas, only one of which was planned, which actually probably isn't that much of a surprise to you if you've been here for any length of time at all. Uh, <laughs> maybe we're more surprised that I've actually finished something, who knows. So I'm going to talk through a couple of the things that I have been making with you today. So yeah, it's actually been a surprisingly knitty, crochet-y, no, just knitty. It's been a surprisingly knitty Vlogmas for me so far. I was anticipating being a lot busier than I actually have been. Um, I, was, I came down with COVID this Monday, just gone. So to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, about five days ago. Um, and it means I haven't been able to go to work and um, I've had a lot more time on my hands. And while I've not been as productive as I might have been, had I been well and had a week off, I've certainly done a lot more than I was anticipating. And um, so first of all, I've actually finished these last week, I think. I want to say, or maybe I finished them, no, I finished them on the 4th of December. I was finishing them the day I found out I had COVID. And it's a pair of socks that I have done in a UK size 8 um, for my friend Jude, um, my son's uncle. And uh, yeah, it's, um, they're a bit too big for my sock blocker because my sock blockers are really for my feet. Um, and possibly a little bit bigger and these are for a UK size 8 so there is a fair bit of a flop at the end of my blocker here um, but just so you can see the the yarn and the stitch definition that I thought this would do so the yarn is actually from the middle a little um, it's when they did their um, yarny event which was the first weekend in October so 30th September 1st of October then and I saw a lot of chatter on some Facebook groups I'm in. Um, I'm in the Winwick Mum group. Um, for anyone who likes Winwick Mum sock patterns and knitting, then that's a good group to be in. I saw a lot of shouting about it in there and people say, oh, I've got to go and try it. And I saw it some other places and I thought, um, why not? Why not? I'm on, I'm on holiday, right? It's a work trip, it counts as a holiday. So I went and I treated myself. And actually when I saw these, I thought they would be perfect for Jude, who is wanting to update his sock drawer. And actually, I wasn't sure what to expect, being perfectly honest, um, from bargain basement yarn in the middle of Lidl. I was so, so thrilled. I actually really enjoyed knitting this yarn. I love the stitch definition. It's really, really neat. And I knit my socks on a two and a half needle, which I've come to understand is by a lot of people's standards quite, there's a crease in them, is quite um, large. But I've done a 64 stitch cast on two and a half mil needle. I think I did a 60 round leg 
standard heel flap and gusset. It's my basic vanilla sock pattern. I say my, I think everyone's got a basic vanilla sock pattern in their arsenal, but um, mine is available. Um, I believe it's on my website. I have to check that and get that sorted if it isn't. I, need, I am updating it with more photos and more instructions and hoping to release that in the new year. So yeah, so I finished one and then immediately cast on the second and finished it the day I found out I had COVID. And they're beautifully matchy-matchy. I've really, really enjoyed working with the yarn. It was 4 dollars for 200 grams of four ply. It's a standard sock yarn and the ball band has instructions for how to knit socks. I mean, they're slightly sparse if you are a complete beginner, um, but I found the size chart to be incredibly useful. I am very new to knitting socks for other people. I knit for my dad, I knit for my husband, I knit for my son. Um, my dad was the trickiest one because I couldn't get him to try them on. I had to send him a finished pair and trust that he was actually giving me the correct feedback. Um, and my son is much easier, although he's growing, which makes it harder. And my husband is right here. So to knit socks for other people is a bit of a challenge. Hang on. If you can hear some strange noises coming from behind me, my next door neighbours are either playing pool or have decided to dust the pipes around the radiators. That's all I can think of. That's all that sound is. Anyway, um, for, forgive the sound. So yeah, the value was great. And there was a size chart inside which shows you how long from back of the heel to the start of the toe, the um, sock should be. Um, so you measure from the very back of the heel and at the point you reach, for this one it's 21 centimetres, that's when you start the toe. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them and I really like the yarn. I bought my aunt some of the DK weight yarn. I've got some of that too, but I haven't knit it yet. And she's just knit a pair of socks for a gift um, for Christmas in the DK yarn and she had a similarly positive experience with it so way to go little <laughs> then the logical thing would have been to cast on the second sock for my mother-in-law um, I'll show you the first one I think I've shown it to you before but just to show you again Sorry, my phone decided it wanted to update. It's never successfully updated in the two years I've had it. So there's no way I'm going to let it try now. Um, uh, but this is, again, my plain vanilla sock pattern. This time I've done a one by one um, twisted rib at the top. Is it twisted? No, a one by one rib at the top. And um, same standard slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I've tailored this slightly. Um, my mother-in-law's got quite narrow feet, so I actually started with a 64 stitch cast on, I think I've tapered right down to a 56 at the gusset, I've done a slightly longer gusset. So the logical thing would be, having finished Jude socks, um, which I cast on having finished this one, the logical thing would have been to grab the yarn and cast on the second sock. And I didn't, instead, <laughs> and I haven't got a blocker for these, because um, I made some when I worked at the shop, but obviously left them all there, and so I need to make some more. Instead, I cast on a matching mini sock for my son, so that he can match his uncle, which is quite sweet. Um, absolutely loved it. It took me a day or so to work up, um, and I really enjoyed that one. So, you're thinking, did you at that point, Gemma? Cast on the second of Robin's socks. No? Okay, so did you cast on the second of your... No. Okay. Well, what about the other one, two, three odd socks that you've got for Robin already that you did for shop samples in the summer with the promise to yourself that you were going to finish these and have them ready for him for Christmas? Did you cast on any of those? No, of course I didn't. The next sock that I have cast on, which you saw happen in the opening credits if you were watching closely, was I then cast on a Christmas sock. This is from my Christmas basket of yarn that I put together at the start of Advent. 
I'm going to turn you slightly, you can see it here. I love it, it's so pretty. Um, I selected from my Christmas basket of yarn and I have cast on a sock. Um, and I did this, I cast it on yesterday. So I cast on this and I worked on it during my meetings. And obviously I was making lots of notes, so I didn't do that much. I got to maybe here, but then in the evening and overnight, I finished the leg. I've done a 65 round leg for this one because I got a bit carried away. I've done the heel flap and I've done the heel turn. And actually it's not often I have a sock in this state to show you and it's really exciting because I really like the um, heel turn. I find it the most magical. Oh, the lighting's not coping. Come on, come on, you can focus, you can do it, come on. Haha. I find it the most magical and exciting part of the whole sock process. That point where you turn your work at a right angle is just so satisfying. I love it. Um, as yet, I'm not decided who this is for. Um, in my head, I'm kind of thinking I should do my dad some Christmas socks. Um, and another part of me is thinking, yeah, but I should do ones for my husband that match uh, and then do some for Robin to match. Can I get those done by Christmas? But then my dad doesn't have these socks yet. And my husband, uh, but my dad does have the Holly Berry colourway, which is, oh, I'm going to upend my basket now, which is this one. And my husband doesn't have these yet. So I could, in theory, do both. But that would involve me casting on second socks and actually finishing pairs rather than having lots of ho-ho-hos everywhere which while it sounds festive doesn't make for particularly warm feet however in this house I never have pairs of socks I make pairs of socks but then I end up with one of each sock and at different times I will find different ones of each a pair of socks with no explanation I don't know where they go I have moved house I've cleared out my socks I had pairs of socks we've been here three months and they've all gone again I honestly couldn't tell you what happens. So maybe it's just a false economy knitting pairs of socks. Maybe I should just cast on all the socks and knit all the socks one at a time and just have fun enjoying the yarn and to hell with it. Apparently I only knit odd socks now. And I don't care. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying plucking from this box of yarn. Um, I'm not going to enjoy it so much when I've finished using these because then I have to get find my Swift and Ballwinder and I don't know where they've gone either but hey ho that's a future Gemma problem and future Gemma she can deal with it it's fine I believe in her I have every every faith in her capabilities because she will of course have grown as a person uh, compared to the person that is sitting here before you now so yes at the moment undecided as to who these are going to be for um we shall see and that was a day and I've done that so I'm not too not too worried about getting my ability to get these finished but aren't they just so festive it is called the fairy lights colorway by west yorkshire spinners and it is non-sparkle it's their signature oh, please focus it's their signature four ply there we go non-sparkly um which makes it ideal for dad to be honest oh I'm not sure. You let me know. Should I do these for Mr. Midnight and Mini Midnight? Or should I send these ones up to Dad and do Mr. Midnight and Mini Midnight Hollyberry ones? Because then my Dad and Mr. Midnight and Mini Midnight will all have matching Christmas socks. Because my Dad's already got a Hollyberry. What do I do? <laughs> do you think I will finish any of these? You can be honest. <laughs> Editing Gemma here. Another question to throw in about the Christmas sock debacle. Um, my husband was tidying upstairs, as you were aware, and he has come across the suitcase that I took when I went to Kent, which wasn't the suitcase I thought I took when I went to Kent. So hurrah, he's found my inhaler, which is excellent because the coughing from COVID is starting to, yeah, um, and it's, it's what led me to having an inhaler last year. <laughs> COVID, and here we go again. So he's found my inhaler, but he also found this. This is Signature Sparkle. 
in the Nutcracker colourway, which is this year's Christmas colourway. So of course it's going straight downstairs into my basket of festive yarn, of course it is, but do I do this for my husband and son? And possibly me? Hmm. This isn't one that I could do for my dad. I don't think he'd tolerate sparkle in his socks. I think that would just be, from a sensory perspective, I think that would be too much. So, let me know what I should do. I mean, I'm probably going to cast them all on anyway, regardless, but still. <laughs> I need to sort out at some point who's getting what pair. And for those of you who watch the podcast and are thinking, yes, but um, Gemma, weren't you designing a pair of socks? in Jude's yarn from Stranded Dye Works, especially for your husband and you were working down the leg and you were really excited about the pattern you're going to get it out to testers and you're going to have this new pattern to launch to which I say okay I genuinely just paused for about 30 seconds there because I have nothing to say there is literally nothing to say in my defence um, I can't find them, I don't know where they've gone I don't know which bag they're in um, my husband is tidying the bedroom upstairs, which means when I go upstairs, I shall do some tidying of the bedroom too, and maybe I shall find some. But we are we are cursed with no storage. Um, and actually, honestly, because they're a pattern sock and it's a pattern I'm writing, I'm not going to get those done for Christmas. I know there is not a snowball's chance in hell of me getting those done for Christmas. Um, but there we are. We have a collection of single a collection of single socks all a collection of single socks all wanting partners all of them may or may not get partners by christmas so there we are there we are so what i've turned my attention to instead in my covid adult brain state is toys decorations i've not knit toys or decorations really before i started a duck, a toy duck, a Jean Greenhow pattern and it was a little duck with a blue bonnet on and I started it for a friend of mine at school when I was in primary school who was having a long anticipated baby sibling and I never finished it. I knit jelly babies, again Jean Greenhow patterns for my mum who was a lover of jelly babies again when I was about 10 and I never finished them. I actually found the unsewn, unstuffed jelly baby body parts years later, I think when I was at uni. Um, so I don't have the greatest track record with finishing toys. I can't think of a single one that I have actually, oh no, the wish bears, of course, what am I talking about? I designed wish bears. Um, I don't know if I've got any pictures, but years before I started nursery, um, the project bag I ran, a little kind of hobby business or fledgling business called nursery knits and I designed a teddy bear pattern um, and it's uh yeah so I knit those knit a few of those but anyway I needed something simple that wasn't a gift knit that, I, that didn't matter and so I picked up a packet that had somehow come with me um, of a toy a toy kit that you get free on a magazine and it was from let's knit and I found out it was actually January 2022 and it was penguins and uh, polar bears. It says January, but I think it's one of the ones that comes out in December because they're distinctly Christmassy or wintry. Um, and so I knit a penguin. And here's my little COVID penguin. And I'm not going to announce the winner of the giveaway yet because I want to give it a bit more time for some more name suggestions to come in. So if you go back to the episode where it says about having a COVID penguin, then there is a giveaway on that one. Um, the prompt is in the video and you have to comment below the video and I will be announcing that nearer the end of Advent and it will be for a pattern or something. I I'm not sure what yet, project bag, something like that. It'll be a surprise, a festive surprise. It's just a bit of fun really, it's not even about the prize, it's just about a bit of fun. But anyway, there we are. So this is my penguin. Robin is quite taken with my penguin and I'm very proud of myself because it involves intarsia. I've had one attempt at intarsia before in my life and that was for my husband's boss who was expecting his first baby and I was doing a colour block knitted blanket and it's knitted squares but rather than knit the squares and sew them together it was done in intarsia. Oh my goodness, I tried everything 
I had my balls wrapped up in little bags and I was tossing the bags around and trying to keep them untangled and it just it was an absolute unholy mess in the end I gave it to my mum and she finished it for me um so I did I did share the credit and I've been putting off doing my son's Thomas the Tank Engine jumper I made a start on it at the start of Vlogmas you'll have seen or is that in the November vlog I don't know anyway I made a start on it um but I'm started on the back and the sleeve so I can avoid the intarsia because I'm so scared of it but this has an intarsia and I did it I'm so pleased um it's making me feel slightly more confident but that could be the covid talking who knows so having done this and talked about um the nostalgia I feel for knitted toys and decorations um reminded me of the ones my mum made for our tree when I was younger I found I looked up and from let's love crafts yeah love crafts I think they're called now they were love knitting weren't they and it rebranded some time ago to love crafts I found a Christmas pudding pattern isn't that just so sweet I'm really quite taken with that I've knitted a Christmas pudding and I did it and on the last vlog you'll have seen I have such respect for people who can conceptualise and then design the knitting patterns to create toys like this. When I was doing the instructions for the leaves, I was following the instructions, I thought, it's got to be wrong. This makes no sense. How can this make this? But it does, and it's magic, and it's just amazing. Um, so go and have a look at last night's vlog for that, or the night before's vlog, night before's vlog maybe. But the holly leaves episode, it was so much fun. It's gonna take a lot of these to get through all the stuffing I bought though. I ordered online, and you know you hear about those stories about how someone but you know orders one packet of mushrooms and then they do their online shop and, and it arrives and one singular mushroom turns up because that is technically what they've ordered because it's not a packet it's loose mush mushrooms and they haven't read it properly so they get one single button mushroom i mean what the people who are picking this must think um i kind of did the same or, or, or you buy a deck chair on ebay and it turns out and it's a deck chair for a doll's house that sort of thing well i ordered I, what i thought was a fairly standard bag of stuffing it's bigger than my size it's, it's huge this bag of stuffing it's going to take a lot to get through so that's my second little decoration and the other thing that I've been working on again I've picked it up in the last couple of days is my habitation throw which I'm sitting on which is not too clever where's the end of the nib Woohoo! that's close to the end I artfully draped it and then promptly sat on it so you couldn't see it um it's my habitation shawl throw by curious handmade so i am well on the way now into the decreases and by well on the way i mean half an inch no actually i'm doing myself a disservice i think that's a good inch that's a good inch folks a good inch um there we are into the decreases so um i'm on color 14 now i'm adding in yeah color 14 which is a really nice here it is rich green so i wound that come on mm. so i wound that overnight last night and i've started adding it in just this morning so i'm i'm about halfway through colour 14. I do have to get a bit of a wriggle on because it's the 9th and I wanted to get this finished by the 14th so that I can quarantine it before sending it for a gift. Um, so no, that's 14. So I've still got 10 colours to do. Yeah. Yeah, so I've still got 10 colours to do and um, I've not got... 10 days I've got about four days five days probably five days um to do it in my husband's whistling now can you hear that I'm not going to worry too much because it's a vlog and that's the whole point of the vlog it's it's as it happens I don't really have any hard and fast 
making plans now for vlogmas for december i'm very much taking it as it comes making what i fancy making in the moment and actually i'm enjoying my making there plus a jennifer um, who watches in Australia, hi, <laughs> um, sent me a lovely comment on my last video and said that I should cast on all the things to distract myself from what's going on with Robin, which I think is very sage advice. And I shall take it, provided I can find enough needles. <laughs> um, yeah, to that end, thank you. It's only been up a couple of hours um, and I've already seen that there have been some really lovely supportive reassuring comments on my last video um it was very very frightening watching my little one gasping for breath and struggling um and it also brought back some fairly horrendous visual audio memories as well for me um so yeah it's uh it was it was definitely um scary and, and i think it's scary under normal circumstances um from the sounds of it croup sounds just utterly horrendous um but yeah so yeah he's in bed napping at the moment and i'm going to see uh, about maybe doing a little bit more knitting and trying to rest and relax because i was up until about a quarter to five i think i must have drifted off because i missed my husband's message saying they were going to be let go um and i sort of woke up as they were coming in at half past five and then next thing I know it's sort of half past eight so I've, ha I've had a few hours sleep but obviously broken um, and we are just trying to rest today so I'll see about maybe doing a little bit more knitting um, and hopefully we'll be back with some more regular content tomorrow depending how things are going but I say we're just very much seeing how things go at the moment and taking it as it comes I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been making. I'd love to hear how your making's going and keep those movie recommendations coming in because I think we might, might check one out tonight. <laughs> All right, take care, folks. Bye.